So I'm here to talk about scaling your business within Europe and particularly obviously focused on fundraising because it's, it's a lot of what we do with our, with our companies in, in supporting them. So if my slides would go on. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, I'll just do it, do it like that then. So, I mean, I think one of the, um, you know, one of the points I kind of wanted to get across today for, for companies here is I think the environment has changed dramatically in the last sort of uh, seven or eight years that, that we've been doing this. Um, you know, about, about um, nearly a decade ago when we started Seed Camp, it was very tough to raise capital across stages um, of, 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 of starting and scaling your business. And I think where we stand today, I would argue it's actually, especially in the early stages, it's better to raise capital in, in Europe than it is even, even in the US. So um, hopefully, again, my slides will go up. But I think a couple of sort of fundamental things have happened. I used to sort of say, in Europe, at every stage of your, uh, at every stage of your business, you generally raise half the capital of your counterparts in the US. And so that's fundamentally changed over the last few years here. Um, you know, leading that charge has been, I think what, we, what you see is a generational effect. So we are kind of in the third generation as, as we've been you know, studying it of entrepreneurs who are starting some pretty cutting edge businesses and also entrepreneurs and operators who are starting funds and angel investing to, to a great degree. So the average deal size for a seed round has changed from you know, roughly about a quarter million pounds to about half a million pounds or, or more. And that shift is dramatic. It doesn't sound necessarily big to you when, when you think of it um, you know, in the hundreds of thousands, but if you imagine that, you, you extrapolate that across every stage, it, it's, ah, <laughs> it's been a dramatic change. <laughs> don't have a clicker, so hopefully it goes to the next slide. Anyways, I'll keep going. <laughs> there we go. So a little bit about us. I didn't cover that. We, uh, we are aiming to be the founder's first round uh, fund of choice all across Europe. Um, we invest pre-seed and seed stages, so anywhere from your first check to your two million you know, pound or, or euro round. And we really focus on three things. So we, ah, thank you. <laughs> It's all coming together. Um, so we provide a, a platform for, for learning. We really believe in, um, you know, in providing access to the best sort of mentors and talent around to learn from, uh, access to a very global network, and then capital. So on that note, capital is obviously critical to hire and to market and, and, uh, and really scale your business. So our companies have gone on to raise nearly about half a billion in, in capital um, across 500 unique investors globally. So we know a lot about what it is to raise money and how to, you know, how to work with and, and pitch to and deal with investors. And about a third of them are, um, are, from, are from the US. And here are some of the great names who, who funded our companies. So we believe a lot in uh, getting some of the best investors around your table. So big picture, as I talked about it, it's, uh, you know, one of the biggest things has been the generational change. And as you can see, I mean, I think we're about a decade or so behind. Um, you know, we're here, we started off in the 90s with some real kind of, um, some real enterprising founders as such with, you know, founders of Skype and, and Trade Doubler. But then you, have, you had a lot of kind of uh, corporate operators as well. So Nokia, Google, Yahoo. And then over the last kind of 20 years, you've seen them really go out there and make their mark and, and start their own companies. So I think that's been, fu you know, fundamental. So as I, I'm gonna now talk through the stages of the fundraising. So as, you know, as we said, there are a lot of angels with real exit experience, and, and that's been a dramatic change. Below are some of the angels we very actively invest in. Jeremy App yesterday won the Europas for the best angel investor in Europe, so it gives you a little bit uh, of an idea uh, of the kind of people around. So, you know, especially these five, if you can, if you can get some money from them, um, you're on to something, you know, something exciting in terms of um, how helpful they are and valuable they are to, to work with. So, you know, all these, all these folks are now starting their own funds, angel investing, Operation, operational as well. 
Um, the other, you know, one of the dramatic changes also in early stage has been the emergence of seed VCs. So again, a lot of people with operational experience, brilliant funds across, across Europe, I think, especially in London and Berlin, um, but you know, in the Nordics and, and uh, Southern Europe and, and so forth as well. So crowdfunding, I think compared to the US, Europe has really gotten it right, especially the UK. Um, we believe a lot in, in crowdfunding and, and some of our best companies, you know, certainly look at, look at that as an option. We've, uh, we raise roughly, roughly 1x our fund on AngelList already for, for our companies. So, you know, Crowdcube, Cedars are amazing. You get, you get to really kind of sell to your customers, make them your shareholders, get a lot of product validation and, and, and you know, create real brand advocates. Um, also, I think, again, what we've needed in Europe, because a lot of kind of, fund of typical fund of funds don't exist, we've had incredible London support, so 25 million plus to co-invest with, for example, us and others, to you know, two, 200 million plus just for UK VCs. Um, so yeah, so a lot of kind of public money has been supporting pri private money as, as well. So also tax benefits, I mean, I would, Again, I would look down to that, um, that small square there, the average fundraise. I would say SEIS and EIS has really been the, the catapult to, to making that average, um, average fundraise uh, size you know, get up to, to the level I, I mentioned. So as you can tell, just a phenomenal growth in, in investing in you know, very, very risky, uh, risky asset class. And I think, again, thank, to thank the government for a lot of the policies that, they're, that they've enacted on, on behalf of, um, of founders. So, you know, so in a nutshell, the early stage has never been better. It's better to raise here, probably easier to raise here um, than in the US right now and than it's ever been. Um, and I think if you, you know, you have a real choice in your hands as to who to, who to raise from. So the later stage, a little bit of bad news in the sense that, um, you know, the later stage funds have, have dropped significantly. So it is, that, that funnel gets really narrow when you get to series A, B, and, and above. So I think you have to kind of consider that as you're raising your seed rounds and, and thinking through how do you get to series A and B. Not to dwell on bad news though, what is happening is um, a lot of the VCs are providing a lot more support than I think we used to see a, a decade ago. So folks like Index Ventures, Balderton, Notion, Point9 out of, out of Germany, you know, a lot of help around um, sourcing of, of talent, around marketing support, sales, partnerships, ops, ne obviously networking and, and so forth. I mean, when, uh, again, when we started, you know, about seven or eight years ago, we really kind of innovated on, on all the, all, on all the right-hand side of things, and it's incredible to see sort of the whole VC structure and, and space in, in Europe, um, you know, raising the bar and, and really trying to compete for your, for, uh, for you as businesses and wanting to invest in, in your businesses. Also, the, the Americans are, are solidly here. I mean, I think in the early stage, it's, uh, it's, it's still sort of, very nominal, the number of investments they're making, but in the, in the later stage, you know, you can see a lot of great examples across the, the Nordics, um, again, Berlin, London, and, and so forth. And, and you see, you know, with unit places out of Portugal and uh, Job and Talent, m much more recently, a couple of days ago, out of Spain, again, you see a, a lot of kind of, you know, scale up companies that are starting to, to get attention and, and rise above the noise. So I think we'll just continue to see more and more of the, more and more of the Americans coming into the later stage. So the other, um, the, the few kind of, the few kind of groups of people who you don't necessarily talk to, and I would encourage everyone in this room to really kind of push and, and get to know these kinds of folks is, you know, family offices, corporates, ultra high, uh, ultra high net worths. The whole kind of game is changing for these groups of people, especially the high net worths and the family offices. They're tired of uh, they're tired of money managers and middlemen, um, you know, taking away a, a cut. So they're trying to really directly access startups, and for them, it's definitely easier to get into the later stage. So they are hungry to get into Series B, C deals, even a little bit into Series A, where there's significant traction. So you know, as you can see, I mean, this is U.S. data, but we anecdotally, I mean, we see 
see it in Europe as well, is the trends really kind of, um, you know, pulling up in, in these types of investors uh, getting in. They're not as accessible, so I think you have to make an effort to, to really kind of get to know who, who these folks are. But uh, again, they're often people who've made money in, in, as operators, and so they're pretty, uh, pretty great folks to have around the, around the table. Um, also, venture debt. Um, you know, there's there's SVB, which recently uh, entered the market a few years ago, um, Barclays, and and so forth. So I think you know there's been much much greater sort of uplift in in venture debt provision to to startups and later stage later stage startups in particular. Several of our companies have certainly raised both from Barclays and and SVB, and there's you know all all types of sort of uh, lending peer to peer and institutional as as well. So don't forget to look at that. Um, so some of the key, key takeaways in the last kind of few minutes. Um, you know, I think there's still a myth. Like, I think a lot of VCs get up here and talk, talk, talk about how much capital there is in Europe and that every great company gets funded. And, you know, it is very much a myth. I think even, uh, even now, about a decade later, it, there is... There is a ton of money in, in Europe, and you know, particularly, uh, particularly in London, as you will see, but not every great company does get funded. So I think we can't be too sort of relaxed and resting on our laurels about, about um, fundraising and how we, how we um, go across the stages. You know, it's still, it is still more risk averse and it takes more time. So um, understand and kind of know that, that even, you know, it, it, even if you are great, it's still a, it's still a tough road to, to get that capital. The second takeaway is capital is king. I think, I think European startups have generally kind of patted ourselves rightly on the back for you know, being revenue focused and, and bottom line focused and, and, and growing that way. But I mean, I think if, if I have to see, if I have to look at our most successful businesses in, com you know, in comparison to, to those who struggle, um, cash is definitely a differentiator. So I think if you can raise the right kind of capital um, in, a, in a big way, you know, it, it is a big differentiator against your competition because again, competition is rising very fast and pretty much at the same time across the, across the globe. So uh, raise as much as you can when you can. Um, third takeaway is the hubs dominate. So it, you know, the game very much has concentrated in, has become concentrated, especially the, the later stages into London and Berlin, a little bit into the Nordics as, as well. But I think if you wanna raise, you know, seed, series A, B, C, capital, London is definitely the place to be. Um, a lot of the capital comes through here in, in one form, uh, in one form of, or another. And again, across, across all the stages. So get yourself to, London, obviously, as I, as I would I would say, buy it in a biased way. Um, fourth takeaway uh, is you know get off the conveyor belt. I think it, as I as I as I talked about venture debt, f family offices, corporates, and and so forth. I think those are real real and crowdfunding and all of that. Those are real options. They give you a lot of control, and I think a, a lot of fundraising it is a, is about control across across all stages. So I think make your own way. Um, it's not a cookie cutter approach. And so don't put yourself on, you know, on just kind of one, one highway without any exits that, that you can um, get on or off of. So, you know, get, get off that conveyor belt, make it your, make it your own path towards your, your destiny. And along those same lines, you know, the last, uh, last kind of takeaway is the ch your choice matters. So I think from the earliest days to your kind of, you know, m a or IPO or, or, or kind of long-term sustainability, every round matters and who you bring at every round really matters. And I think the one difference probably versus a decade ago is the choice is much more in your hands as, as entrepreneurs. I think the VCs and um, folks like us and, and others are really chasing after you, the, you know, the, be the best of you. And I think the best of you in, in the audience today uh, definitely can control your own destiny and choose who you want to have. Uh, you know, cross your journey. So I think I think it's important you pick the best of the best of the investors you can. So those who can really help you on the industry side, the, those who can help you, uh, you know, across the different stages and to, to navigate. Those who can help you with talent and um, and and really kind of some key partnerships and relationships and and so forth. So be uh, you know, design your own uh, design your own destiny. So that's, that's kind of it, including the, the first couple of bits there without the slides. So hopefully that wasn't uh, 
too disruptive. Um, but yeah, I'm, a, you know, I'm around for Q&A after, and uh, thanks so much.